You are going out again, then. Yes, Eleanor, I told you that. You've been away on the road all this week. I'm tired of sitting around here while you spend your time out on the town. On the town? Eleanor, you know my business. Your business, your business. I'm sick and tired of hearing about it. Yes, I know, I know. You've been telling me ever since we were married. Change the record, Eleanor. This is what I do for a living. Living. Some living. Eleanor, that living is paid for this home. It's bought you a new car. It's paid for mine. Paid for all of this furniture. You've got everything you need. What else do you want? I want $500. 500? What for? Because I happen to want it. What do I have to do, get down on my hands and knees and beg? If I still had the checking but, account... Uh, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Mark, where are you going tonight? I told you. Ann Sherman's. I've got some dictation. <laughs> dictation. That's right. You know I've got to get caught up in my work. <laughs> work. Everybody in town knows what kind of work you're up to. If they do, it's because you've been spreading lies. Running to the neighbors, telling them our private affairs. Your private affairs, darling. Leave me out of this. That's just what I intend to do. Mark Clayton, I warn you. And I warn you, Eleanor. I can't take any more of this. You leave this house now. Don't bother to come back. I'll be back. And we'll settle this for good. <laughs> session in court trying to straighten out rival claims in a half million dollar damage suit, I looked forward to a quiet luncheon. But my secretary, Miss Brent, had other plans for me. Mr. Maris, I'll be deeply and slowly, Miss Brent. You'll be all right. It can't be that important. But Mr. Maris, I tried to reach you by phone, so I had to bring Miss Sherman here. But you're keeping her at a safe distance. Well, no, I made an appointment for you to see her here. Here? This is my lunch hour. I've got 45 minutes, and I've got to be back in court. Please, Mr. Maris, it'll only take a few minutes. She's in trouble. There's been a murder. Look, I've known her for years, and she's an awfully good secretary. A murder? Yes, it's the man she works for. They've arrested him. Please, dear Mr. Maris. All right, Miss Brandt. Uh, Ann Sherman, this is Mr. Maris. Miss Sherman? How do you do, Mr. Maris? Why don't you two girls have lunch with me, and you could tell me what this is all about. Oh, oh, I, I'm afraid Miss Sherman is much too upset to eat lunch. Oh, I could bring you something from the drugstore across the street, though. That's very considerate. Hurry back. Oh, shall we uh, sit down? The man you work for has been arrested. Who is he? And who is he accused of killing? Mark Clayton. His wife was shot last night. Would you defend him? Miss Sherman, my field is corporate law. I know, but somebody has to tell me what to do, what to say. 
There's something that Mark hasn't told the police. He said he found his wife's body after he came home from a long walk, but... But what? Spent the evening with me. At my apartment. Does anybody else know this? Any other witnesses? No. It's not what you think. It was just business, Mr. Maris. He came there to dictate some letters. At night? He travels a lot. He can't keep regular office hours. I knew that when I took the job. Why hasn't he told this to the police? You don't know the type of man Mark is, Mr. Maris. He wants to keep my name out of it. But you're willing to take that risk yourself. What I said is the truth. I don't care what anyone else thinks. Is he in love with you? No. At least, there was never anything said. If you could just talk to him. Somebody's got to help. I I'd do anything. The only thing you can do is tell your story to the police. Miss Brent, take down Miss Sherman's statement. I'll take it to the police and talk to Mark Clayton as soon as court adjourns this afternoon. Now, uh, may I have my lunch, Miss Brent? <laughs> So the girl says he got there a little after 8 and didn't leave till 12.30. So that would make it impossible for him to have killed his wife. I believe she's telling the truth. Oh, Herb, it sounds like the old story to me. She loves the guy, so she comes up with an alibi just to get him off the hook. But the trouble is, he's not off the hook. There's too much that stacks up against him. The neighbors overheard them arguing last night, probably about the girl, and it's common knowledge with them that Mrs. Clayton knew about the girl. The gun was registered to him, and very important, we can't think of anybody else who would have any reason to kill her. What about prowlers, burglars? We checked it out. Nothing missing, no signs. Then you believe Clayton killed his wife in an argument over the girl? Why didn't he just go to her and ask her for a divorce? Oh, that's how we figured it happened. He went to her, asked for a divorce. She got mad and pulled a gun on him. She pulled a gun? Yeah, so we got the coroner's report and the ballistics men verified that the shot was fired from extremely close range. Here, let me show you. Take this in your right hand. Now, there were bruises on her wrist, as though he had twisted it. You see, it all adds up. She had the gun and he grabbed for it. So it could have been an accident or a manslaughter. Well, that's for a jury to decide, unless Clayton's willing to talk. I'd like to hear what he has to say. Well, be my guest. Oh, Consulate. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Always happy to welcome you to our jail. <laughs> Why did you let her make that statement? The police are entitled to all the facts. But they won't accept what Ann says. I knew they wouldn't. That's why I kept my mouth shut. I didn't want her mixed up in this, this mess. She's a nice girl. A thing like this could... Clayton, your life's at stake. Anne wants to help. Now, let's get back to what happened that night. About the gun. Well, I've got a permit to carry the gun on the road. My first samples are expensive. You just come back from a trip. Yes, I... I put the gun in the desk drawer. I... I meant to unload it, but... Well, we got into this argument. About Miss Sherman? Not specifically, but that's what she meant. I... I didn't want to quarrel, so I walked out. Why did you keep working with Anne if it bothered your wife? Mr. Maris, that's just one of the things we argue about. I really think Eleanor hated me. Therefore, she hated everything I liked. My friends, my business, my secretary. I couldn't change them all. Are you in love with Anne? No. I could have been very easily. But there was nothing to hope for. Eleanor, Eleanor was a strange woman. I, I don't think she really wanted me, but she'd never let me go. What do you know about your wife's friends or enemies? Eleanor wasn't the kind to make many friends. As far as I know, she, she had no enemies either. Then who else would have a motive for killing her? I'd like to help you, but I must have some facts. There's only one person who knows the facts. Eleanor. She's dead. So, Counselor, now you've seen where Eleanor Clayton died. What's she like? Oh, just a plain average housewife with a husband who made a good living for her, no more, no less. Average, Lieutenant? When it comes to human beings, that word doesn't exist. Well, you didn't know Eleanor Clayton. She was a good housekeeper. She had no close friends, no enemies. She didn't drink, paid her bills on time. Didn't go to parties, didn't throw any. You add it all up and you get nothing. 
Maybe that's just bad arithmetic. Oh, Counselor, don't blame Mrs. Clayton for this mess. My boys went through the bureau drawers, closets and everything. She wasn't exactly a flashy dresser. No, the tastes were fairly simple. And how does this add up, Lieutenant? Oh, that. <laughs> that bothered me when I saw it. But I figured even Eleanor Clayton would have a party dress. Like this? Cheap, gaudy. Well, tell me, Herb, what is it you're looking for? The real Eleanor Clayton. And why anyone would want to kill her. Oh, excuse me, Herb. That's probably for me. Hello? Yeah, this is Weston. Give me that address again. Okay, I'll check on it right away. Uh, look, I've got to run. Will you lock up when you leave? Sure, I won't be long. No, they're not mine. I never saw them before. I see. What was your wife like when it came to money matters? <laughs> Uh, we always had trouble over that. Until about six months ago. We had a joint checking account. I had just returned from a trip and discovered that she'd uh, withdrawn about $600. She refused to explain. I, I didn't want to make an issue out of it. So I just had the account changed back to my name. You're quite sure you never heard of this place? No, never. What is it, a nightclub? No, a gambling casino. The Lucky Seven was deserted that afternoon. Maybe its customers didn't like to gamble on Friday the 13th. I had no trouble questioning the employees about Eleanor Clayton, but I did have trouble getting answers. No one seemed to recognize her name or her photograph. What do you have, folks? Well, I'd like We'd to... like a little information. Ever seen this woman in here before? No, I've never seen her before. She might have been wearing a black dress with sequins on it, very low cut. Mister, she could have been wearing a bikini and I wouldn't notice it. My job is to sell drinks. Hey, Buster. Yes, miss? What makes you think I'm a miss? What makes you think my name's Buster? Okay, I'm Lillian Doyle. I could sure use a drink. You haven't been getting the answers you've been asking for, have you? And I'm awful thirsty. I think she's trying to pick you up. Why don't you come along and protect me? Bartender, whatever the lady's having. I'm uh, Herb Maris. This is my secretary, Miss Brent. How do you do? You ever see the woman in this photograph before? Is she in some kind of bind? A very tight bind. She's been murdered. Suddenly, I don't think I'm thirsty anymore. Please. I'm an attorney. Eleanor Clayton's husband is in jail, charged with murder. I don't think he did it. Look, Mr. Maris, I can't help you. If you can identify the woman in this photograph, it might save a man's life. Simple as that? OK, I know her. There, we just saved somebody's life. Was she in your office? Did she come in with somebody else regularly? Mm. She came in alone and left the same way. Ever talked to her? Only when she dropped a bundle at the tables in the gaming room there, which was like every time she came into the place. I wonder if you'd mind repeating what you just told me to a friend of mine, Lieutenant Weston. A cop? No, thanks. I don't think I'd like to talk to cops. As a matter of fact, I don't much think I like talking to lawyers either. Look, Lillian, you're the one person I've found who can testify that Eleanor Clayton lost a lot of money gambling in here. It's a hidden part of her life. I think it could lead us to the real reason for her murder. I need your statement. Please. All right, but not in here. They don't like cops at all. Where? My apartment. Nine. Good. Five, eight, three. Blackman Street, apartment seven. You won't be late now, will you? I 
we got trouble. Somebody's around asking questions of lawyer. Shall I give him some answers? No, 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 no. It, it's a dame that hangs around the bar here. Now, she's got answers that could fry us both. Nobody else around here would tell the cops a thing. Or maybe she could have an accident. She just might have that. I'd asked Lieutenant Weston to meet me at Lillian Doyle's apartment at 9. But an urgent call from him brought me there an hour earlier than I'd planned. And the neighbors smell gas in the hall, and they called us. We found her lying here on the floor with the gas turned on. It looks like a suicide. You said looks like. Yes, I'm on my way to the coroner's office now to find out if they've found anything new. What's the matter, huh? Poor Lillian. She wasn't the type for suicide. You get it, Jeremy? Suppose I meet you there later. I've got some business at the Lucky Seven Club first. Bartender. Where can I find the owner? I'm sorry the boss is out. When you expect him? Well, I don't. Nobody expects anything around here. It's all a matter of luck. Hey, where do you think you're going? That's private back there. Excuse me. You looking for someone? Yes, I'm looking for the boss. That's me. What's your beat? Sore loser? My name is Maris. I'm an attorney. I'm investigating the death of Eleanor Clayton. And I'd like a little information on a woman called Lillian Doyle. Why don't you talk to her yourself? She's here every night. Try the bar. Not tonight. Tonight she's at the morgue. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? Nobody has to talk to you. You're not the law. Would you prefer the police? Mister, you're flippin'. I didn't even know that Lillian Doyle was dead. She's the only one who seemed to remember that Eleanor Clayton lost a lot of money at your place. Somebody killed her tonight before she got a chance to make her official statement. Look, I've got nothing to hide. Sure, Eleanor Clayton came to my place, and she lost a lot of money. Would you like to know just how much money she dropped? Nine thousand dollars. Here, take a look at the IOUs. She hadn't paid these up yet, huh? That's right. She was still alive. I had a chance to collect what she owed me. Now that she's dead, I'm out nine G's. Didn't you try to collect these? I had an arrangement on that kind of deal. Arrangement? Yeah, a collection agent named Harry Rice. He talked to my slow pay customers. Sometimes they got pretty good results. The kind of results that killed Eleanor Clayton? Look, mister. I don't know whether he talked to Eleanor Clayton or not. All I know is I gave him a note a month ago to collect for me, and I didn't get a dime back. Now, that's the story. All of it? I'm leveling with you. If you got any funny ideas, why don't you talk to him yourself? All right, maybe I will. Harry Rice, huh? Him and his partner, Leo. They got an office in town. They're in the phone book. All right, thanks. Do you mind if I take these IOUs with me? You can have them. Take them with you. Thanks. Um, here's the coroner's report. Shows traces of chloroform in Lillian Doyle's lungs and nasal passages. So she was drugged before the gas was turned on, but there were no fingerprints. Everything was wiped clean. Knobs on the stove and the doorknob. So whoever did this job really knew their business. Yeah. Take a look at these. Eleanor Clayton, where'd you get these? From the Lucky Seven Club. It's a present from the owner. Lucky Seven Club, a cheap joint run by cheap hoodlums. I've closed plenty of them. The owner said that she'd turn the debt over to an outfit 
headed by uh, Harry Rice and a man named Leo something. They were supposed to collect from Eleanor Clayton. Uh, this is a lot of money. Enough to put the pressure on. Suppose Harry and his partner called on Mrs. Clayton while her husband was away and she panicked and pulled a gun on him. Could be. She was shot. They get out. There was no way to tie him to the killing. No way until Lillian Doyle said she'd talk. She could testify that Mrs. Clayton lost a lot of money there. So somebody got to her first to cover their tracks. Have Harry Rice brought in for questioning. No. Uh, we really don't have enough evidence to go on. I've got a hunch our only chance is to catch them off guard. Now, if you'll cooperate, this is what I had in mind. My name is Maris. I've got a job for you. Well, look, Mr. Maris, it's pretty late. The office is closed. But this job can't wait. Here, I want you to collect on these for me. I'm not interested. Maybe the police will be. I've got a story that goes with these IOUs. What is this, a shakedown? Let's hear what happened that night you called on Eleanor Clayton to collect this debt. I don't know what you're talking about. How about tonight, then, when you called on Lillian Doyle? Never heard of her. I think he did. I think he killed her. Mr. Mayor, you better get out of here. I'm going to find out the truth, Mr. Rice. Not just about these two cases, but about every dirty deal your so-called collection agency has ever pulled. Trouble, Harry? Or both of you, Leo? Harry, we got to start packing. This guy knows. He sure does. If you hadn't messed up on that Clayton deal. It was an accident. Anyhow, you got no gripe coming? The other job I did tonight was nice and clean. Yeah, but what good was it? Now we got this lawyer on there. You know, he'll go to the cops right away. Not if we get to him first. Chloroform, all right. Leo, what were you trying to pull? Who, me? Why, I... Do you always carry chloroform when you visit strangers? Yeah, I got to. I need it for my fainting spells. Don't tell him anything, Leo. We'll get ourselves a lawyer. I'm a lawyer, Harry. Maybe I could get you off. The way it looked tonight, it was Leo who killed Lillian Doyle. If it was Leo who shot Eleanor Clayton, you've got a good chance of getting off. You could plead that you tried to stop him from those murders and you failed. Was that the story, Harry? Can I talk to you in private? Fred, take Harry downstairs now. Hey, wait a minute, Harry! Just a minute, Leo. You better start telling your story before Harry does. Yeah. Well, there was an accident with that Clayton dame, all right. We only wanted to collect the dough. And she pulled a gun, I grabbed for her, and I went off. And Harry figured we had to kill this Lillian Doyle. Are you willing to sign a statement? Yeah. You ain't gonna let him get away with his story, are you? No, Leo. He won't. You won't let him. Let's go, Leo. Here. I got your handkerchief. 